Hello fans, I am here with part three uh, concerning the CSB translation itself. There's going to be a part four because this just went too long when I ran it the first time. and So we're going to do some more general and then in the last set, part four we're going to turn to some specific passages comparing the CSB to some other versions. Alright, first of all, the CSB 2017, and I have the reference edition here, large print reference edition, and I have a Holman Christian Standard Bible text only 03 version on my left in a, in a beautiful rebind. It, CSB is a major rebind of the Holman. It does the following things. It does not capitalize deity's pronouns, so God and he would not be, he would not be pronounced, would not be capitalized. It abandons the use of Yahweh. Well, there's some arguments that, for that, but it, it's, it's a good move for modern speakers and doesn't offend Jewish people. It tends to be more gender inclusive. Um, some of the New Testament passages where we use the word anthropos, which is traditionally translated brothers because it does use the male declension of the noun, are translated people. And that's a more, um, a more dynamic translation than the literal brothers. And it seems to have fewer changes in the Old Testament over the Holman Christian Standard Bible. That's my, my perspective. Translation philosophy. It calls itself, and so does the Holman, an optimal equivalence. In a rough ballpark, here's what it means to me. On a scale of 0 to 10, with 0 being dynamic and 10 being formal equivalence, it shifts in, that, in the middle range. I don't think it ever becomes a 10. It does never become a 1 or a 0. It probably shifts in the range of the 4 to 7 range. Sometimes it's more literal, and sometimes it is more dynamic. And the plus is this. Formal takes seriously uh, that a word-for-word -word and sentence structure of the original, uh, but it can be awkward. It's not always good English. Dynamic is thought for thought. The problem is it loses some meaning when a choice is made to emphasize one uh, aspect of, a, of what the words mean, and it loses sometimes the minor nuances. So it's a theological choice of what is the important meaning. And that can be a problem. Not to say the optimal is what they call themselves, and I, it just varies up and down the scale. There's no way to say we're just as good as in every point as a formal or a dynamic. But what they do is try to, passage by passage, make choices of where on the scale they need to be. My criteria of looking at the Christian Standard Bible, and that's the one on the right, is public reading, private devotions, English style, theological tendencies, and contemporary form of vocabulary. Public reading. I was raised in King James RSV. I like the rhythm, the beauty, the CSB, or no other version I know of that's not from the King James tradition does not match up. But I like it better than the NIV, which I found flat. It's a little bit less flat. And it's, it's a more natural style for me than I find... Um, in almost all modern versions with the exception of the New Living Translation and I like the NRSV a lot. It's also a very um, fine one for in that sense. English style, that's what I was speaking about. Theological tendencies. Well we could talk about Calvinism versus Arminianism, conservative versus liberal, Pentecostal versus non-Pentecostal. Uh, Holman is Southern Baptist which are mostly Calvinist but I haven't done a study to pick apart the passages that would lean that way. And usually most versions that are decent don't have more than a very, very slight sway one direction either. Um, if they do, they're, they're rejected by everyone else and they lose their credibility. Like I said, it uses contemporary form of vocabulary. Most changes of, from the Holman Christian to the, the Christian Standard Bible, they're a single ver um, word tend to be an update to a more modern or simpler to understand word. Uh, the, Holman, the Christian Standard still retains a lot of theological vocabulary, but in other cases, language changes and the average American is no longer churched or biblically literate. So you can't assume they understand a lot of things. Though Christian Standard Bible has not gone the full route of the NLT and abandoned almost all traditional theological terms. I find the Christian Standard Bible to be similar to the ESV in many regards. When 
it changes from the Holman Christian Standard Bible, it seems many times to go towards ESV, and that's odd. And that's ESV is the um, revision of the RSV, mainly done for conservative evangelicals. The CSB is smoother than the NIV 84, as is smoother than the Holman Christian as well. It gets rid, rid of some of the quirks of the Holman Christian. It's aimed at evangelicals. Example, there's a passage in the Old Testament, Isaiah 7.14, which was a firestorm when the RSV came out. The RSV used the word young women, young words, young women in place of virgin, and this infuriated evangelicals. While these kind of passages, the Christian Standard Bible has stayed, stayed with the traditional um, use. There are also, it seems to look at verses that are in dispute. Example in Mark 6, 10, you know, the final, everything 9 and after is disputed by many as not being in the oldest versions. Well, it tends to not put these in notes, and if, it retains them in the text with some brief statement, um, but retains the size of the point, text and all. So traditional people who like to read these verses, we feel that because they were in the King James, that makes them more reliable, um, will not be offended as easily by the Christian Standard Bible as they would. Some others like the NRSV, which put them in a tiny little bracket or down in the footnotes. And that was a choice, I think, that was based on conservative sensibilities. The CSB will not replace more literal formal equivalent for detailed study in which every single word needs to be um, examined and that's okay. Who, everyone needs more than one modern English version and a person with a CSB and an NASB probably be a pretty good combo. I recommend the CSB. Last year I was in a small Southern Baptist church in Southern Illinois and they had all these HCSBs in their pew. Some former pastor had convinced them to buy them or something like that, got a deal. There they sat almost new. Pastor didn't preach from it. I saw people bringing their usual NIV 84s and New American Standards. I didn't see people grabbing them out of the pews and using it. Holman Christian Standard Bible was just quirky. Even for the Southern Baptists it was quirky. The CSB comes back into the middle line and I think a decade from now it's going to make a real impact in this market. And probably most of it will take from the NIV. Just my impression. It won't take from the NASB. And um, if they can market it properly and get it out places like Walmart, where the NIV is and NLT is now, that would be great. I think they could actually move in the top five. We'll see if it actually happens or not. But uh, this is a good version. And I'm very thankful to the Holman people who forwarded me this um, sample copy. All right, this concludes part three. Part four is going to cover specific passages examining the CSB compared to three other versions. Bye-bye.